Hi everyone and welcome to Spray the World, the channel dedicated to street art and urban art. Today it's time for my review of the second half of the exhibition Le Grand Vite at La Réserve Malakoff. If you haven't seen the previous part, I invite you to go and check it out before watching this video. Like this you understand much more about the exhibition and you have the link right there. If you have seen it already, well, here is my review of the second half of the exhibition Le Grand Vite at La Réserve Malakoff. So remember, we just left the installation by Isa Zaro called Identity of a Blonde and now it is time to enter in what is to me the most relaxing installation of the exhibition called Natural Vibration by Vini and Rea One as you will literally enter in a dark forest. And as you can see on the image that I'm showing you right now, you'll discover a beautiful and impressive sculpture by Vini. And to me, this character is like the goddess of this realm created by the artist. As far as I know, this is the first sculpture she ever made, and it is a perfect interpretation of her graffiti work she does in the street, but this time in three dimension, as you can see on the image that I'm showing you right now. Vini shares this space with Rea One, a graffiti artist with whom she collaborates quite often in the street. Here again, the abstract graffiti by the artist become a 3D sculpture, and to me it is like an insect that the goddess would have given life to and now is dead dedicated to protect her. I don't know about you, but this space really make me felt at peace, and this is probably why it is one of my favorite installations of all the exhibition. Even if we are now changing of installation by entering the one from 3615, we stay in a forest, but this time a much more symbolic one, a cosmic forest. You'll see on the walls of that room a poem written that is very deep and that is written like in a calligraphy style. To be honest, I'm not really sure I understood completely the whole message behind this installation because it is not really my artistic universe, but still I find the technique pretty impressive. And now, third installation in a row that pictures a forest, the one by Mademoiselle Maurice. But this time it's a shamanic forest, full of dreamcatcher and of course our signature style origamis. It is a really nice installation to walk in and to look up and discover all the little detail. And as her classic work on the street, this is a very meticulous work that probably took her a long time to complete. Still, I have to admit that I prefer the work she does in the street with her walls, but also her painting as you'll see a bit later in the video. Exiting this forest, you are invited to enter in Moscow Cave, that changed a lot from his stencil work of animal he does in the streets. Here, in the darkness of the cave, Moscow created a light installation that emphasized his stencil work. To me, it is really like entering an animal lair. And what I found really cool, and I'm probably not the only one, is that every time you're looking at a piece, you'll see the reflection of another one on it. This cave really gave me the impression of being like a prey. You know, there is one animal distracting you, all your attention is on it, and in fact, there's another one in your back ready to strike, and you see it only too late. I don't know if this was Moscow intention, but this is how I felt, and I loved it. After that, time for probably one of the most important impressive installation of the exhibition, if not the most impressive one, the wooden sculpture by Shaka. Here he managed to recreate his very recognizable graffiti style by picturing the face of a man with wooden boards. Just like his normal work, here you can feel the movement animating the face. And I really like the fact that he didn't paint it and leave it raw, as the natural line of the wood give an even greater sensation of movement. Really impressive, no? After that, there is the booth shared by Monsieur Lo and FKDL. And yet again, to be honest, I didn't really understand that work. But I mean, that is what is great about art, is that not everyone is sensitive to the same artwork. So here in that case, the work by Monsieur Lolo with this cabaret mood does not speak to me much, although I found it fun. And it is the same for the work by FKDL, that is like a tribute to popular figures from the 20s to the 70s, but probably because those are not my references. After that, there is the collaborative work between Paul Corona and Jean Yorevas. Corona painted those pretty cool ethnic figurative portraits, as you can see, and Jean Yorevas sculptured those metal prehistorical creatures that are also really cool. I found this collaboration work interesting, as each work is like an echo to the other, and I love the setting on the wall 
that gives you this impression of an elevating movement as if the creatures were trying to escape from the room. Just in front you have the work of Argentinian artist Martel, which is a contraction between his first name Martin and the city where he's coming from, Buenos Aires. It is funny because the first time and the second time I went to the exhibition, I didn't really pay attention to this work, find it a bit simple. But the third time I went to the exhibition, I started to see this work differently and start to enjoy it. And that is what I love about art, is that in some cases it will take you time to enjoy the work of an artist. In the end, I love this installation called A House Full of All of Us. I love the drawing technique that may seem simple but is not. I like the fact that it's fun, colorful, and this setting remind me of my own house when I was a child. So in the end, even if it took time, it was a great discovery. Once you exit this room, you'll enter in the city created by Jana and JS and their installation called I'll Be Around to Guide You. I love this space because of the dynamic created by the building they painted and the contrast with those characters represented there in those very intimate positions. Cuddling and resting, it's so cute! I love also the fact that the artist used specific materials to create their installation, such as wooden panel, doors, construction material, that are a great echo to the city we live in. Anyway, I've always been a fan of Jana and JS work, and this installation was one of the highlights of the exhibition. Now we are arriving in the booth by Antti, and I must say that I love it. I like the contrast between the dinosaurs and the futuristic cities built on them. It reminds me of some sci-fi cities I've read about, or some old cultural legend where cities were built on gigantic animals like island on the back of a turtle, for example. This work is brilliant and it is a visual shock for both young and grown-ups and it will make their imagination work. The next installation is by Les Frères Coulures and this work is very interesting. First of all, the technique that consists in creating a portrait that is becoming less and less blurry to finally focus on the eye of a child is very impressive. Then the message behind this installation is great. It is like how children are going to look on the world that will leave them. A word symbolized by the sculpture above the eye, a word broken in pieces and sad, like the color the artist used to paint it. For me, this work is really a work about awareness for grown-up, so that we change our way of life in order to live a better world for our children. Just after that, there is this work by those called Stairs, but I'm not really sure of what it means. Please let me know in the comment if you can explain it to me. Now it is time to enter inside the 8 where you'll see the collaborative work by the 9e Concept. And as usual with them, they came up with a crazy installation that mixed perfectly the work of each artist as a single piece of art. Man, I love their work and their creativity. Here, as you can see, they created some sort of planetarium hanging in the air with the work, among others, by Olivia de Bona, Mathieu Dagorne, Romain Froquet, Nyarkwan, Théo Lopez, Gilbert Mazout, Stéphane Caricondo, and Niwos who created the centerpiece. And on the floor you can see a constellation with the name of each artist as an echo to their work above. I just love it. Still inside of the 8 but on the other side, you'll see a space dedicated to a more classic exhibition where you can see the work of the artist that you normally find in galleries. And after this exhibition, it is great to see the contrast between their work in the installation and the work they do on canvas. Personally, I fell in love, for example, with the painting by Mademoiselle Maurice. But I also love the canvas by Vini, Rea Wan, JBC, Dem Dion, so really don't miss this space because you'll see very different work. Almost exiting the exhibition, if you lift your head you'll see the huge cat painted by Monsieur Chat, literally Mr. Cat. It is a classic figure in the street since 1997 and it is great to see it there. Finally, as the exhibition ends, it is time to have a drink at the bar under the installation by JBP. JBP works with the pedestrian walking sign, here setting him on what seems like a roller coaster, a bit like the visitor coming to see the exhibition. I mean, to me, this exhibition is a bit like this roller coaster because at some time, as you will walk through the installation, you will feel excitement, fear, 
fun and you'll have quiet moments also. And everyone will live this experience differently depending on their sensitivity to the art that is showcased there. And that's why I think this installation is perfectly set as the last one of the exhibition. It is a great metaphor of what you've just experienced. Well, that's it for today and for this great exhibition, Le Grand 8. I hope you enjoyed those two videos. If so, don't forget to share them and to leave a thumbs up below. Please let me know in the comment, now that you've seen it all, which is your favorite installation of all the exhibition. Remember that you have until 30th of October to go and visit this exhibition and it is cheap through Europe per person and very close to Paris, so you have no excuse to miss this opportunity. If you want, you can also buy the limited edition of the book of the exhibition that collects all the interviews of the artists that participate there. The interviews are fun to read, the pictures are beautiful, so if you can, don't hesitate. So to end this video, congratulations to all the artists that participate in this great adventure and made us live an extraordinary moment. I want to thank the association INZU that made this exhibition possible and especially a big big thank you to Anna Wazis and Adrien Bernard who conceived this exhibition. Thank you so much! If you want to know more about this exhibition, I recommend this great video by Ila that covers the backstage of the exhibition and the creation process. You'll see, among other things, great interviews of the artists and how they work. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos to come and remember that you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram where you'll see, for example, much more pictures of this great exhibition. So, until next time, don't forget to spray the world. See ya!